Hello, and welcome back to Parlay, the show where you folks support the other stuff I make by paying me monthly to talk about the topic of your choice. And this month, Liliana has requested discussion about this. I'm going to leave this looping for a little while. Um, they're all kind of examples of the same thing, I guess. Uh, we're going to talk about that. Um, and the request is, this is it. This is my Parlay request. Lily, you said, don't give me that look. You've done more with less. Uh, and that's true. I did that in the last parlay with the banana loaf. Um, this is uh, actually a lot to go on. Um, shall we create a temporary term for this thing? As usual, my personal preference is that it isn't meaningful if there actually is a term for this thing unless it's very widely known, which is subjective. But I believe there isn't a widely known term for whatever this thing is. Um, so let's uh, maybe give it a word to use, uh, which we'll define just for this parlay. Um, we don't have to, we're not cooking for the queen here. It doesn't have to be perfect. Uh, and it's looped, by the way. I'll leave it going for a few minutes so you can soak in each of the individual examples. We might talk about them individually too. Um, the, um, the phenomenon is this feeling of like something, it would have, it would have just fit or you would have just made it um, something would have been crisp and satisfying, but then it, it's denied, um, that feeling of denial. It's about to go in, oh, or it's about to finish, oh, that'd be so satisfying, but then it just doesn't. Um, some of these are different depictions of that. Some of them are, um, uh, like a thing just perfectly fitting, but in a negative way. And some of them are, are something building up and there's no release. Some of them are like the soup spoon, like this is great, but then something ruins it. Um, an elegant and crisp moment that is uh, interrupted or ruined somehow. Um, there's a feeling of anticipation to them. Man, I, I really don't like the idea of having just one name for these things. Um, I'm, I'm going to call them beautiful disasters. How about that? Um, there is something... I kind of love this, you know, like I'm enjoying watching it as I'm doing this parlay. Um, but there's something about them that is a, a form of anticipation. Um, there's this elusive, memorable kind of emotion driving moment, um, like scoring or avoiding scoring a goal in a sports game that just makes it kind of anyone go, ah, you know, uh, there's that that feeling. Um, which, depending on your experience with people watching sports games loudly around your apartment, you may or may not be as irritated with as I usually am. But th this I like. It's very relatable. Um, the stakes feel... Uh, it just makes me happy. It's weird. Like, this is so negative, but I look at them and I just... I, I, you can't suppress a smile somehow. That's how I feel. Um, what do we say about them? Well, there's no further guidance. It's just this image. But it is a very particular kind of feeling. Um... This is something uh, relatable. Uh, I recall a parlay in the past where I gave my opinion on uh, literary references. I talked about how I believe, and I spent a lot of time annoying my English department and arguing in college, that uh, references to things like other literature are inferior to references to things that people understand better. Like, the best references are the more understood references, and anything else is just gatekeeping. That's what I argued. That might sound, if you are somebody who is trained in the art of proper discourse, you might your knee-jerk reaction should have been, that's probably an overs oversimplification, let's investigate. So let's investigate. Um, I like these. I like this because it feels very universally relatable. It, a lot of this is kind of modern society stuff, uh, so that's something, I guess, but like we live in a society, which I will now be saying in every parlay, apparently, um, and uh, these are things that uh, there's there's really nothing to get, you know? It, it just sort of automatically, you think, that experience, you know, that feeling of anticipation, and then, ah, uh, um, I think... Even people other than humans understand this very well. Something in cats, for example, uh, that can be very frustrating when you're training a cat, is this phenomenon by which they kind of like when something is unreliable. If they mow at the door, and they you, you have to let them out eventually, but they don't know when, 
it, it reinforces the behavior a lot of the time because they think like, well, it did work. I just don't know exactly when. Or if I beg for food and you ever, even once, give it to me, the fact that you don't frequently give it to me, they often won't unlearn the behavior easily because it's kind of exciting to not get it. Um, what else do they have to No offense, cats. But what else do you have to do? Um, having had a variety of cats in my life over the years, I've experienced it, maybe it's a bit of a personality thing. And it depends how you interact with them. I've had uh, cats with which I was able to form more of an understanding that did or didn't do that relatively more or less. But that feeling like nothing is a sure thing. And so having these mundane mechanics of life kind of not always work perfectly, even though there's a very clear process that you're familiar with, but sometimes it just goes awry somehow, is, I think, a very universally relatable experience. This idea that that is a superior type of reference, a more resonant type of reference, if you want to use something that you feel like people have common ground with, uh, is something I believe quite strongly in. I feel like uh, a lot of writing back in the day used a lot of literary references, not because they disagreed with what I just said necessarily, but because relative to their cultural context, more of the people who could read had read the works they were referencing. There were less things and less literate people. So it actually was a pretty universal reference. And people have kind of just carried that over. The good work we have when literary culture in the modern age was establishing itself, um, has been work that was more uh, insular, you know, reference itself more. And I would argue maybe not necessarily because those people really thought that was better, um, just because it, it did make more sense back then, maybe. Now, obviously, there's always been a social standing component, but again, that's literally just gatekeeping. Do you think that people's standing in society should be decided by whether they get your raunchy poetry? Didn't think so. So I don't know, like, I just can't... It feels like an oversimplification, but I honestly think that it's better to just reference things that are more universal. I, I can't think of a benefit of doing that. I don't know. Like, as an inside joke, that's one thing. I don't know. And another thing is that I think when people do it as an inside joke, like, you form habits that way, though. Like, you'll do it in contexts where people don't get it. Um, if you get lazy and start giving examples based on assuming people have common ground, you won't suddenly switch and not be lazy that way. It's very hard to give different types of examples for different crowds. That is quite challenging. Uh, you probably won't, you know, really switch. That's what I think. Um, let's watch more of this. Uh, this is the banana loaf from the previous parlay. Let's watch more of this, <laughs> this one. Um, because kind of like the banana loaf parlay, um, I think that there is a, a universal nature to these, uh, to this clip, um, that is uh, satisfying in a way. You know, it's fun to have that common ground with people. And kind of like in the banana loaf parlay where I criticized people uh, having kind of false common ground, uh, going to, you know, a club or something and acting like those people have a ton in common when really they don't. They're almost all using that thing that they maybe don't care about that much really as just like a way to have some common ground when I think people should just be unafraid to like be a person and find out how other people are. You don't need some superficial thing that you both do. But maybe some people do need that, whatever. Um, this to me is a good example of something where um, it it's resonant in a, in a way. I feel like we can all talk about somehow um, or we've all had an experience that, you know, people might have stories where uh, they had an experience of uh, this happening in a more extreme way. I like how some of them are really short, like the toast splat is kind of an outlier to me. But uh, there's the off-screen context that that piece of toast was ready to go. You were walking it across the kitchen or whatever, and it went boom, a splat, and you had this this moment. Or there isn't even like an event with the progress bar thing. It's you're just kind of waiting. These are a lot of forms of a similar thing. Um, I like that... Uh, there are different interpretations of um, of what this feeling is. Um, in fact, we could actually go through each of them and talk about the nuances. Why don't we do that? But uh, yeah, I, I think it's interesting how while these are all different, uh, they do kind of evoke a certain universal feeling, almost like a poem, uh, which I think is really fun. 
Um, so yeah, actually, let's. Um, I have the ability to pause, and then we can go through them manually. Um, so this is going to be the one where the drink spirals out, but then gets stuck in the vending machine. Something I I think unites these is that they're kind of unknown. But again, there's a regularity. Like this is a machine; it's supposed to do the same thing every time. It's almost a wonderful, frustrating surprise when it doesn't work a certain way. Something that also resonates with me about this one is the feeling like because it's just but it just does the thing like it just do the thing i feel more aggressive energy to take action and shake the hell out of the vending machine than i would in other situations you know your soup spoon falls into the soup and you don't think uh oh we can move like this that's interesting that's a little too jumpy i'm not going to do that um but this example you know i i i'm often not incensed I'm not like really mad when this happens. It's just like up. And there's almost something satisfying about things sinking. You know, when you put um, like a glass or something in water and uh, there's air keeping it afloat maybe, but then you dip one edge in and it begins to flood like the Titanic and eventually bloop, there's no more air pockets and it goes under. Um, there's something uh, like almost positive about these negative things, um, almost satisfying. Uh, again, there's a sort of art, a disaster to the thing. Um, something I often like to think about, um, about things that, that feel like art, the word cloud of things that are art, because there is no single definition of art, because no one agrees on one, is that art is kind of a, is, is wasteful in some way, or decadent in some way. Um, the the abstract art that I personally don't appreciate very much, the paint on the canvas in no particular shape. Something I do get about that is that it's like you wouldn't do this except for the artistry of it, or even something that is just a scene of a normal image in life, like this. You feel like, but why would you capture this negative experience if it was in daily life, except to kind of highlight, like, look at that. Isn't that kind of positive? You know, there's something about art that is like, this would be a waste otherwise, I, I would almost say. Um, and yet, it, it, it somehow something is being added. I think that's fascinating. Um, but yeah, very different level of emotion from this one to this one. Um, we've got the basketball hoop one, a lot more uh, anticipation. Um, I would argue this is one that people might more universally find like fun. Um, the anticipation is enjoyable. The the soda can coming out, you... um you you're not really anticipating you think it'll just fall sometimes you're stuck there waiting sure um but here you're not uh one maybe fun thing about going through each of these examples will be is there a commonality between them uh we'll find out and again this one has a i said kind of that thing in a sport where you're waiting you're waiting and then ah oh, or there's like ah oh, i got in uh that that fun you know boom brain serotonin kind of thing um, that uh, I think like uh, first-person shooters do a lot, for example. Uh, like, why is this fun? It's just like, it's fun to hit a button and a noise goes boom, you know? Um, audio in video games is a huge part of the, the primary gameplay loop, of the moment-to-moment -moment satisfaction of a game in a way that I think is very difficult to appreciate until it's not there. Um, anyway, uh, moving on to this one. Um, yeah, this is a like a so close or like a regret one that I think is a, a little different from like the soup spoon or the um because that would that one it's not like so close. Uh it's just there there's a moment where things were good or there was the potential for goodness. There's anticipation and then a release and then disappointment. Is that the pattern of all of these? Anyway, this one feels like a little bit of an outlier to me. Uh, we skipped the toast. I might not be able to rewind precisely enough. Oh, so good. This is, I think, one of my favorite ones. Um, the the little spray of jam. The fact that it's like not perfect, but there's an artistry, there's a beauty to the way that it is fairly evenly splattered. Uh, gravity has helped you out to make a relatively even jam smear on the ground, but it's not perfect either. It has this particularity. This is the kind of thing I totally relate to this one very strongly. I, this never happens to me. But this feeling of, I almost want to save it. There's something just like wonderfully awful about that. Um, 
it's just great or like destroying something that is perfect after a moment where it was perfect is kind of wonderful these are all things too that i feel like if you did them on purpose you would feel great you know like maybe not the soup spoon one or the vending machine one but the dart the basketball thing like if you if pe no one will know but if you did it on purpose it would be like what an amazing thing or like if you slammed a piece of toast in the ground and it went bam it would be badass you know why again there's a there's a, a wastefulness or a decadence in the uh, the artistry of them that i think is just fun um i don't even know what we're doing in this bar lane but we're just gonna keep going <laughs> And when this happens, too, there's also an element of, like, why? What could I have done to have influenced the outcome to be different, right? Like, I did good. I did it right. There wasn't even that much to do right. I threw a dart at a board. I threw the ball, and it's basically on the hoop. Like, I just needed to be more perfect. Like, I just can't do it, you know? Um, the angle's initially wrong. There's a there's a you've got one shot element to a lot of these as well um, that I can I can appreciate. Oh, this one hurts. <laughs> Damn it, eggs. <laughs> really? Either the yolk runs when you or bursts or cooks when you don't want it to, or the other way around. You're trying not to get it to be yolky, but it is. You bite into the sandwich and you don't know, but then boom, the yolk explodes out. Um, especially uh, egg sandwich people. You know what I'm talking about. You don't know which way the yolk is going to explode out. You have to, like, irrigate the sandwich in a certain way so the yolk doesn't go everywhere. Sometimes you bite into the sandwich and it all goes, boom, shotguns right out of the sandwich onto your pants and or plate and or counter and or loved one, maybe. Not saying that's happened to me before. Um, and you say, I'm sorry, this doesn't usually happen. Uh, <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, uh, the this there's also a, like a minor feeling like not a, a person on hanging on a cliff and falling off after their hands slipped and then they fell it's not the same thing it's like these small miseries in life it's not these huge moments of feeling like oh no all the loss no there's no loss it's not about that it's just like can't we have this why are we here just to suffer you know there's an element more like that it's not it's not that these things are so bad. That doesn't matter. It's not about that. These are normal things that happen all the time. But it's just like, ugh, come on. Or I've had the feeling, I bet you, a lot of you have, of like, but why today? Can't this just be nice for today? I was in uh, college and I got a mini cupcake with sprinkles on it. Bad, not like a delicious cupcake or anything. But just from the dining hall. And I was eating and I was kind of feeling down and I was having a bad day and it was nothing fancy or nothing terrible was happening. And I bit the cupcake and the sprinkles all fell off and I just burst into tears. It was just something about in that moment, the appreciation of this, like not even this can go right kind of thing, you know, which is ridiculous. I, I just could not stop crying at the cupcake being ruined. Um, and I felt like that was ridiculous at the time, but I feel like I really understand that feeling now. And it's kind of this, like, it, it's not always a big deal, but uh, this feeling like, can't these small things just go right sometimes? Um, anyway, I hate that one. Yeah, this is also one of those, like, what could I have done differently? Where, yeah, you know, you could have lined up the dominoes more um, but there's a lack of release, I guess, in this one. Um, I do think some of these are different. They all evoke a similar feeling um, that kind of evades definition. I called them all beautiful disasters. Is that, was that my term from before? But they, they evade a single term. Like, again, you would, even if there is one, you, I, I would argue you don't really want it. Um, this is a more basic disappointment of consciousness uh, than that. But I do think this one is a bit of an outlier. This one, it took me just a second. Uh, if you're confused, the idea, I think, is that the DVD thing bouncing around didn't perfectly bounce in the corner. It went boop boop instead of going boop and then bouncing back, um, I guess. I actually don't think this one works for me. Um, I found that deeply satisfying um, in a positive way, but... And I actually kind of hate it when it goes perfectly in the corner and bounces. 
Um, I don't like that, but... I guess I can get it. You're putting me to sleep, DVD player. Ridiculous. Oh, the classic one. Uh, in my mind, this is like the whole point of Gaul. Is this feeling. This feeling of the absurdity of getting the hole in one or like a, a long shot, but then it goes in the hole. The the sheer unreliability of of doing that if you are a, not a golfer of absurd skill. Um, and then when you play the putt-putt, uh, the feeling of uh, watching it swoop around the hole. What I, what I love about these that unites them too is like, if it's not happening to you, I almost like this more than if it went in. You know, there's something deeply satisfying about this level of failure, like this <laughs> precision of failure um, is somewhat uncommon and exciting in some way. Um, the feeling of it being non-binary, like it didn't just fail or succeed. This one, it's like, if you don't believe in partial credit, reality doesn't even exist, you know? This is one of those where it's like, but it makes all the difference how it failed, I think, anyway. Um, again, this one I think is an outlier. This one, nothing will happen, it just stays here. Um, but you're kind of waiting. Um, I've definitely had games bug out on me before. My Risk of Rain 2 mod build right now it goes through 100%, but then just won't move. And I've tried disabling and re-enabling various mods, and it just won't move. And I don't know what's wrong, I don't know what's broken about it. I guess I have to reinstall everything or or something. Uh, but you don't know. You know, maybe if I left it for like five hours, it would complete. Who knows? Um, you know? Uh, and uh, so there is a, a feeling of anticipation and, and unknown to this one. Um, I also like that there's no uh, time buildup, necessarily. Um, kind of like in the soup spoon one. The soup is just sitting there. And eventually, the the forces acting on the spoon are sufficient to just bloop. But there doesn't feel like there's as much urgency. And I guess, again, in this one, it's sort of like nothing actually happens. Um, it's just an image that evokes this feeling. This one, um, there's something awful about the way that the, um, the, the pinball machine lights up and is all happy when something bad happens. It is, like, remarkable. There's a celebration of sorts uh, that almost makes it satisfying. Um, as much as it's disappointing, I almost feel like the joy of these types of games is the way in which you fail being satisfying. A game that comes to mind for this is Crash Bandicoot, where when you die, you, like, it's pretty involved. Uh, go look up Crash Bandicoot death animations. That's the only thing I even remember about that game. I, I played this as a kid in my dentist's office, of all places. And the way you, I was terrible, and the way you would lose was just... It's like the whole trip. Like, I don't even want to win if losing looks like that. Um, which is a unique thing. This one is a little weird. It's going to go up to... Almost... 5000 flat, I guess, or 499, but it skips those two and goes to 5001. Um, this one is a little weird for me. Um, definitely uh, a human pattern recognition thing, in a way the others kind of aren't, in my opinion. Uh, this is one where like there's no, there's no real significance to this one except our desire to see it be the exact number. There's also an art to this one to me where. E four ninety nine and five o o o, or whatever four nine nine nine, um, are both not like a flat perfect number either. It's not going to zero out. It's just something like we want that outcome. And they're also arbitrary too. It's like we wanted it a certain way. Who's to say this is wrong? Uh, it's not particularly more or less chaotic, right? Um, but there's a way in which it just feels like the thing about these is more happened with the golf putt, right? If it had gone in or just missed, less happens than if it, you know, barely missed and rolls around the edge. Or like the basketball barely getting, barely missing the hoop. More happens because it was a close call than if you totally missed or it went in, you know? There's a satisfaction to both. It could be funny if you completely missed, and it's satisfying to see that swish as it goes in the hoop. But there's something like there's more when it it doesn't do either of those things when it's a near miss. Uh, that's kind of interesting. It adds an event to life. Uh, something happened during the day, you know. Uh, we're almost at the end. Uh, this firecracker one is, I think, the last one. 
Yeah. Um, and that feeling of um, this one is different to me too because if you've used fireworks, there is a minor fear. <laughs> Will it still go off? Are we okay? Um, an unknown level of misfortune having befallen you uh, that maybe isn't the same in the other ones. Um, but that feeling of, again, um, it's almost like more of an event uh, if you're building up to this thing and then, oh, uh, um, you still burn down the fuse, but now you've got this bizarre non-firework that doesn't have a fuse anymore, which is sort of a third thing that you wouldn't have had otherwise. Um, it creates a unique experience, although I guess this one you could argue it's the lack of an experience, but... You have a firework with no fuse, uh, which would be, uh, you could cut it off, I guess, but, you know, uh, something odd that stands out from the rest of the experience of them just going off or you not using them. You have this weird dud that is also, like, vaguely dangerous, <laughs> um, and um, I think that's what defines these. Like, they're it's bad. These are not good things that you're happy if they happen to you, but in a way it's, like, more than if they haven't. There's something something added in the failure uh, for these things to go off, uh, which I think is really interesting. Um, I was very interested when I was in college, I talked about my uh, desire for people to stop using oblique literary references because I think they're inferior uh, and lazy. Uh, I studied also like things off the page a lot, uh, things that come from societal assumptions or genre expectations or format expectations, or uh, again, from things that are in the book, but just not there in the text. Uh, this this element of something being added in because of the context of the situation, uh, maybe on a previous page, a previous chapter, previous works from that writer, etc. And you could argue those things are more or less references. Uh, but again, it's all about how, how common the ground is. There's no sharp difference, really. Uh, if everybody has consumed uh, a work about a wizarding school, then that is a relatively universal reference. Never mind that it's technically a specific literary reference. That does not matter. That kind of stuff never really matters. It's relatively universal. It's a, I think that's a pretty safe uh, approach uh, compared to some other books, whereas some technically natural experiences are not at all universal. And so to say you're describing the wings of a butterfly uh, as the light reflects through them. Like, many people just haven't seen that. Probably less people know what you mean than if you reference some literary thing. So, there's a, yeah, there's an element of commonality to them that is satisfying. Uh, I think that's all I have to say. Um, it was fun to go through them and see the differences and yet the similarities. Um, this feeling that uh, in, the, in the failure there's kind of something added, or uh, there's a way in which you sort of, you like love to hate it, or it's like a scab that you want to itch. Um, no, no, there's a feeling of like destruction or a negative outcome being kind of perversely satisfying uh, that I hope we can all share. Maybe some people don't. Um, yeah, interesting. Um, it's fun to analyze these sort of basic hogs of our enjoyment of life. Uh, it's enjoyable. I'm not, I, I'm not sure. Did I give an interesting parlay about this? But uh, I had fun with it. Thank you.